month of August, um, we take a microscope and reflect closely on uh, sisters, prominent women, mothers, uh, those who are making a difference in society. And I'm joined today uh, by Dr. Shamila Ramjawan. I hope I said that right. Yes. Dr. Shamila Ramjawan, who is a mother uh, from Peter Maritzburg, a businesswoman, uh, an all-rounder, uh, motivational speaker, um, philanthropist. Um, the list keeps going. And in, like I said, in the month of August, we sit and just have a chat to catch up with these amazing, incredible human beings that are doing the most in society. Um, part of her passion as well is teaching. She is lecturing at UNISA in business management. Um, so for all my business students who obviously want to take tips on her own business that she's doing, I think she can draw a chapter from her business journey, uh, which is Farm Ram, and we'll later get to talk about that. Welcome to Touch HD. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Oh, you're more than welcome. I, I always like to meet people that I know nothing about because life is about waking up every morning to new discoveries. And Absolutely. I'm excited to share this dialogue and possibly inspire people who are listening. Because the month of August, which I always advocate to go beyond, should definitely be that month where we dedicate our time and resources in amplifying your content, amplifying your work, being your custodians of the work that you do. And we stand here on Touch HD to celebrate you and uh, get to know you more. So for those like me who wants to know more about Dr. Shamila Ramjawan, when did the journey start, this whole drive of this person I'm talking to? Well, I'm so excited to share my journey with the rest of the world. I actually come from corporate, a corporate background. Right. And about seven years ago, I decided that I'm going to take the plunge and get into business. So I created FamRam Solutions, which was a marketing company. And I say was because I have a division now, Princess D Menstrual Cup, that has taken over the marketing side. And Princess D Menstrual Cup. Yes, correct. Okay. So Princess D Menstrual Cup, it's a sustainable solution for menstruation. Mm -hmm. It's reusable for 10 years. Mm. And I just want to take you back a bit as to how I started that. So Please. when I worked in corporate, I was head of CSI, that's Corporate Social Investment. Okay. And I used to work in communities, and I found that there was a need to keep girls in school because girls didn't have a sustainable solution for menstruation. Um, it's unaffordable to have sanitary pads. And they never used to attend, you know, the lessons that we used to have with the extracurricular lessons that we have used to have. And I decided to come up with my own brand because I used to use a menstrual cup, which I acquired years back okay. overseas. And I found it's a sustainable solution. But to get one into the country at that time, we're talking five years ago when I launched Princess D Menstrual oh, Cup. Oh, I can imagine. Um, it would have been very expensive, especially with the career, getting the product here. And I decided to create my own brand. So, 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 so be, be, before we get to talk about that brand, I mean, there are a variety of things you do. Part you partly lecture at UNISA. Yes. Um, this pandemic has remodeled how we sit in classrooms and, you know, fellowship or educate, if not learn. Um, and none of us were prepared. I'm sure as lecturers, um, you got to deal with. Uh, finding best way to stream your content. I'm always curious to find out, how is the classroom conducted now under the pandemic? Okay, so UNISA is, has always been online. Correct, An online Virtual. university, yes. Yeah. So COVID-19 just came and attacked everybody because we used to have sit down, proper sit down examinations. We used right. to have workshops and lectures for students. Okay. And we had to do away with all of that. So everything is, it's been a transition for lecturers and for students because now the exam since May last year, that was the first online exam that we had for students. And that was quite a challenge because remember as lecturers, we need to now be proactive as well. We need to learn the software, learn the systems. 100%. Because Lecturers have become administrators now because we do all the admin work. I can imagine. And, and it's teaching and the, online. And the salary is not increasing, yet the workload has. Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I keep telling everybody with homeschool, like uh, parents are now teachers. Like we didn't sign up to be teachers, but, you know, the school doesn't give discounts either. 
And, yes. you know, I guess uh, uh, it bites on both sides of the coin. But 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 now, where, why I was asking this question is is most um, institutions like your Henley Gibbs had to shut down completely and adopt to your virtual way of educating uh, your students. And I, I mean, UNISA having been on the field longer, I'm sure that there are some uh, models that could be copied from the way um, UNISA. Uh, operated prior to this pandemic that most institutions had to. Did you have any colleagues in the education industry deploying some of the skills on how best to manage their scope? Absolutely. You know, it's not about reinventing the wheel. You have to go with best practices. What mm. works for one will work for the other. Mm. And if you look at uh, looking at South Africa, a lot of universities have gone online now with exams and studies as well. So, you know, like I said, it's been a huge challenge for us lecturers because we sit in training meetings the whole day um, and other meetings and workshops. And then we still have to do the work. We still have to look after our students. So we do a lot of online. It's on the MyUNISA platform okay. um, where we teach our students. We create new lesson plans. Everything is online. We're going fully, fully online continuous assessment in a few years time where um, the whole agenda of studying online is going to be changed. So we're working on that. But with the online exams, we work on the My UNISA, My Exams platform, where students now sit at home and write the exams. Um, we're going we're gonna to hold that thought right there. Let's, let's hold that thought right there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting um, this morning with Dr. Shamila Ramjawan, and um, I did tell you there's more to doc than just the lecture, the CSI. We're going to talk about the Farm Ram, her business, and how best as a mother of two, am I right? Yes, correct. She still happens to manage all. Two Man adults. Two adults. Yes. Correct. Okay. Does your ability as a business lecturer um, maybe set you ahead as an entrepreneur? Because if anybody walks the textbook, it has to be you. And you're a CEO of a company called FarmRam. How much of what you teach us in class is applied in your business? I would say it's 95%. Because I have hands-on experience with being an entrepreneur okay. and also lecturing in business management. And, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the sections in my entrepreneurship module right. actually covers the business plan. So that covers the entire entrepreneurship status. You know, when you're starting off a business, correct, you correct. need a business plan. You know, I, Doc, I need you to help me. Somebody said to me, everything you study in school is probably 15% of what you apply in the boardroom. Is that true? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you think about what we study in university, right. I'll give you a, a, an example. A teacher, for example. Mm. At university, you will study education, uh, maybe maths or science or whatever. And when you're placed, you would probably uh, teach geography. So it's all about, you know. So, so, so if that's the case, because I, I, I like to apply reason and, fi and facts and science in my assertions, right? Should the University of Life g have more significance over the University of Theory and traditional learning? It's a combination. It's mm. a combination. You know, you have to study. You've got to get the theory in order to implement. That is true. Yes. Okay. So it's all about how you actually apply. The application is most important. So we have a lot of students that come on board and they say they want to study business management. They want to become entrepreneurs at, at some point. Yeah. And it happens because you're going to take your theory, what you've learned, and implement. But also, you need to actually hang on to people that are already in that space, you entrepreneurs. See, and that's where I, I believe in role models and uh, having icons. See, what fascinates me about you when I got to realize I'm speaking to somebody who is a business lecturer at a very prestigious institution, but also a business person. It frustrates me when I come across some amazing mathematician, accountants, but they cannot be CFOs. But you're the best accounting lecturer. But you are not running an, a bank institution. Like, that disconnection for me troubles me till this day. I like to talk to people like yourself who is walking the talk. And maybe you can even come up with ways that can, not to say we want to disqualify, you know, 
traditional textbooks. But I think there's a lot of irrelevant information in school that is not applicable in a day-to-day business. And I want to know, what was your biggest aha moment as an entrepreneur? And you said, man, I never taught this or neither did I learn this in school. What was that aha moment in your business journey? My biggest aha moment was making a difference and an impact in the lives of girls. Because I think for me, it's a passion. And that's where my humanitarian uh, side of me comes out Mm -hmm. because um, I'm very soft hearted. I'm, uh, you know, empathetic. Uh, I'm a giving person. And uh, I would take the clothes off my back to help somebody. Unbelievable. And I just feel that that is where my passion lies in okay. just helping somebody succeed. And I've made such a huge impact. And, you know, we'll talk about that uh, a bit later on as well. Um, it's just seeing the joy and success on these girls' faces. And, you know, when we go out there into the communities, it's not just about giving them a product. Correct. It's about the hugs, the love that yeah. they get. And, yeah. you know, for me, that is the warmth. That is what, I mean, I've had so many girls that say, please take me home. Doc, so and, you deal with, I mean, these are very emotionally draining exercise sometimes because you come across people who you don't understand the impact of your work, what it does, um, how they appreciate it, reaching out. And I find it very, I, I, I salute people with that sagacity to keep going and plowing back in people's life. But the subject of girls and, and, and young from primary school, high school, we've had this discourse for years and years where government has tried rolling out different programs in dealing with the evolution of a woman from, 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 from teenagehood. And I really think we're not doing enough help because we talk about these things, but little is done. Mm-hmm. You still have villages in this country, I can tell you the Minister of Education don't even know they exist. Mm-hmm. Yet those kids are sitting in classroom with no sanitary pads, yes. with not even sanitizers, for instance. Mm-hmm. And, and, and by saying, by, these are the conversations that will spark the acceleration of your philanthropic work. Somebody out there needs to hear this to say, how do we work with you? Are you doing all of this by yourself? Are you, what drives this farm ram solution? Um, what, 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 how, how do you keep the engine going? And which areas in the country are you making this impact? Okay, so to date, I've been to over 400 schools in South Africa. Oh, that deserves a horn. Wow, (laughs) 400 schools. Yes, and we're talking about anything from 200 to 800 girls per school um, who are handing over the menstrual cup. And that is, I have to say this, thanks to my corporate sponsors uh, and my strategic partners. Okay, okay. You can mention them. You can mention them. There's too many to mention, and I'm just scared I'm going to leave somebody out, and then that's totally unfair. All right, fair enough. I I respect that. Um, in which areas do you find there's less help where probably, you know, the triple P model must be more aggressive? Which areas exactly? And by triple P, for those who are listening, private, public partnership, because that's what government is, you know, um, enforcing. We should embark on such joint ventures. But where are we not? I think Gauteng has enough. Uh, I always say Northern Cape is like the most ostracized province in the country. It's, it's like those. We, it's like, oh, by the way, I don't know if you've ever witnessed the dire, like the poverty is at its worst, and illiteracy in such areas. KZN, great. There's a lot of initiatives that are happening out there, but I generally think Northern Cape, and yeah. For now, I can speak about Northern Cape and Eastern Cape for me. I don't think so. I I beg to differ there. I think we have an issue in every single province in South Africa, in all nine provinces, because we have really poverty-stricken areas in the most remote areas in, for example, Limpopo. Sure. um, In the Northwest. The Um, ratio, okay, so maybe I should put it this this way. I I think the ratio of of, of, um, lack of supply and the size of demand for me, I find it at its height, at its biggest height in, in those two places. Maybe it's from my experience, mm-hmm. and I'm yet to be, I stand to be corrected. Um, and, and, and by no means I'm trying to intercept help being evenly distributed. But, uh, but I really think some of us living in metropolitan areas, we are in a bubble. 
Um, yes. the, the we we talk about statistics, and we it's just it's just a sentence that you mentioned. But when you deep and you know, mm. in 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 the field, you get to realize that, that we have to accelerate. You know the triple P model, as I said mm -hmm. earlier. We have it's it's, uh, and I'm trying to figure out talking to you. What better way can we combat this problem? For me, it's bigger than this pandemic. Yes. And I think, you know, if we look at, uh, for example, let's talk about the unrest in KwaZulu-Natal. Yeah. We would think that KwaZulu-Natal is quite established, um, but there's people starving. Big time. So we have problems in South Africa. Big time. And uh, how can we solve that? We have looting in government. Yeah. We have looting with people everywhere in the country, True. almost everywhere in the country. Right. Um, whereas that money can be used to feed our people, give them proper housing and, and water and sanitation, and provide the basic necessities. You're, you're a lecturer in business management. I'm sure there's a part of uh, what, um, your curriculum that talks about crisis management mm -hmm. or risk management. Yes. It's part of business, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, at what point did we not f foresee that um, the so-called insurrection or looting um, was going to deplete the economy to a point where... We never saw it. We never saw private, it coming. But, but what happened to those brains? Because in risk management, you forecast. You see, you go to school to intercept these things. Like, I remember in 2018, there was an article published on the New York Times that said Donald Trump, first thing he did when he got into office, he dismantled the pandemic team. And what this pandemic team was set by Obama was to study these future threats Mm -hmm. that could possibly mm -hmm. hit us. So had we had this team in place, probably we wouldn't be dealing with the situation that we're dealing with right now. I think and the same a, in business. Yes, I that, think that's a major government issue. So, because so where, if we read through all of that, we right. were made aware of what was going to transpire right. at some point. But nothing was done about it. And an and, 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 and average citizen is shocked equally as someone who's deployed in government to foresee these things. It's like, what happened to those brilliant brains that our tax monies are paying them to intercept, to see that, okay, this is going to lead to that uh, before Ticket Pro Dome shuts down, before this hall shuts down, before the cinema shuts, before, you know, the economy depletes. Yes. Let us put some measures in place other than announcing 350, grand, 350 rands grants as a means to keep the economy running. You don't build a country by giving grants, but I'm just saying. And who can live on that? <laughs> so, really? So, so, so this is where I'm, I'm borrowing from your wisdom as mm -hmm. a lecturer in business management because the study of business management is, is, is phenomenal. I think having the experience of also understanding organizational behaviors, understanding that if South Africa is an organization, you need to know the mood of the people. You need to understand what makes your people tick. Some of us, I'm an industrialist, and I feel as an industrialist, as an, as an entrepreneur, we, we don't want reliefs. We don't want grants. Mm -hmm. we, want to, we, want, we just want fair play. Yes, I so agree with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, we just, I just sure. want fair play. And 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 I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm talking to you because as someone who's walked this journey before me, and and I want to speak as your student. Hopefully, I'll enroll in your class one day. Help me because <laughs> a lot of people like myself who want to contribute in making South Africa work, we find that the landscape is not even enough to allow fair play. Mm -hmm. You're not invited to the war room where access to capital. Um, um, access to resources to best furnish your ideas is made available. So yes. it's a difficult landscape. It as, is very difficult. And, you know, I just want to add, you know, uh, we have this term in South Africa for, for people that get all the tenders, yeah. tenderpreneurs. Right. And I just want to add that I'm not a tenderpreneur. I don't work with government at all. Um, so government has not come on board to actually... Isn't it sad, though? It's very like sad. Like the right very, people very sad. Are, not on, are not sitting at the right dinner table. Exactly. It's a sad reality that... Is it because I'm a woman? It's a compliment. It's actually, 
what is meant to be, it worries me that a you saying vehemently and proudly so that you don't work with government, you know, in another place, it should be a loss. But you say that with pride because you don't want to be painted by the same brush yes. of these looters. Yes, because I've achieved everything that I have right my now on God. my own. Can you imagine if we had your brains around those think tanks? People like yourself, when I'm talking about your brains, I'm, sp I'm speaking about the caliber of people of your level. And, and I mean, you've done your 10,000 hours, as Malcolm Gladwell will say. You've done your 10,000 hours in understanding business. But you find that this drought of leadership in strong economic places that should be driving this country. But let me tell you something else. Yes, please. So how much rec recognition does one get in South Africa? Little. Especially me. Little. Okay, Minuscule. I'm a global icon. Yeah. I've had numerous awards. The first for South Africa in so many different ways, different organizations. Um, I was one of 54 on the African co continent Oof. as I won a laureate. And I actually won a scholarship to do my doctorate, which I'm busy with now, the tail end of my... What? <laughs> Excuse me, those are my... Yeah, <laughs> I'm so, calling on my ancestors when I play a so, horn. So, you know, I've had... I actually put South Africa on the map hey. in so many different ways. Hey. But what recognition did I get from South Africa? I don't hit the newspapers. No. I hardly ever get media, but thank you for having me here. Oh, we're going to do more. <laughs> yes. Um, but I get recognized by the new president of the USA with a Lifetime Achievement Award. No. Yeah. Excuse me. Signed and I got a gold Joseph award Biden. as well. A gold award as well. So I got two awards from the new president yeah, I, of the USA. What? And this is the first for South Africa. It's the first for South Africa. This interview is over. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Um, let me read it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hold this. Um, the President's Volunteer Service Award is presented to Shamila Ramjawan, the gold by AmeriCorp in recognition and appreciation for the commitment to strengthen our nation and communities through volunteer service, awarded in 2021. This, okay, now, now, those who don't understand, that, that, that's the President's Volunteer Award, ladies and gentlemen, and holding my hand here as I'm holding a Lifetime Achievement Award with grateful recognition of the AmeriCorp at the office of the President of the United States. Joseph R. Biden. Damn. Signed by the Honorable President, President of Biden. the United States. Yes. I... Yeah. And I want to say thank you to the Global International Alliance for nominating me for this award. Um, amazing organization that's doing great work in the USA, working directly with President Biden. Uh, um, Ambassador Lenora Peterson also worked with um, President Barack Obama. And uh, yes, so she had a committee there as well. Doc, let's reset. Very, very importantly. It's biblical. A prophet has no honor in his own homeland. One, I get that. I don't like that phrase. Mm -hmm. Not everything in the Bible I agree with. Don't get me wrong. I'm spiritual. Christian, I love the Lord. But what I don't like is phrases being used to justify or to qualify negligence and mediocre. I find it difficult, as I'm having this conversation with you, that your achievement never made the front page to inspire that girl. We are in Women's Month. This is signed by President Biden, okay? S say what you want. Um, the Oval Office is probably one of the most powerful offices. Absolutely. Yeah. My I'm really proud. My really opinion proud. won't buy two gallons of gas, but the truth of the matter is it's probably the most powerful office, and you have an award signed from the Oval Office. And yet, we are not identifying this gem this diamond to form part of what we call think tanks and committees that are being set up every day i wake up i'm hearing there's this committee that's dealing with this this committee is trying to deal with this issue there's this new um program and and i and i'm asking myself where where 
are the likes of Dr. Shamila in groups that are meant to emancipate the right woman in the right economic space. If you are not there, who is there? Exactly. How are they? What's, what criteria do we use to qualify who should form part of such? Or do we work with people that we can easily control? I love that word criteria. What criteria? That is what we need. Because you're holding the biggest credentials now. We need to know. Exactly. And it's not my opinion. Okay, me and President Biden think you have the biggest credentials to form part of such teams. And the question that we need to ask, you know, somebody said, um, and I'm going to go to philosophy in one of my class of cultural and ethical values. I don't know if it was Plato, but if you feed society, if you feed society, I have to say this right because I know I'm on camera, <laughs> but I'm going to try what 70% of what it's trying to say because I'm, I'm, I don't want to be emotional now. Um, to domesticate a group of people, you have to feed them a particular message all the time. And that message ends up being their reality, which eventually becomes their truth. Mm -hmm. And they see life through that lens of what you feed them. If you feed people fear, then we all become paranoid. If you feed people mediocre, we start celebrating your fish because it can swim. If you keep feeding people average, you know, we start celebrating people who will not make an impact outside their borders. I think we've got to a point where we no longer distinguish between great and mediocre. Yes. And what is so sad? We have such a beautiful country. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, and I'm saying this because thank God for this pandemic. It's the longest I've stayed without traveling. And I had to because I'm, I mean, I, I'm always on the road. My, my, what I do, I get to, I've had the pleasure of being in 28 countries in the past five years. And I thank God for that. So when I have an opinion from a worldview, I think I'm qualified to have an opinion about South Africa. Most definitely. And what is really, really sad and I'm worried about is one day we're going to wake up and realize this great depression. We brought it upon ourselves. I think, the, I think it's here already. I, I will tell you, two weeks ago, I basically had a meltdown because hmm. of what's going on around me. Sure. Uh, you know, it's the one thing losing family and friends due to COVID. My God. Then it was the unrest in KZN where I have lots of family and friends. Hey. Um, you know, we literally couldn't eat because we felt that our families and friends were starving on the other end. 100%. Oh, you know, so it's it, only it affects human. you. All of this affects you. Yeah. yeah. And then it's the, it just was everything that closes our onto you and it was just unbearable but I mean I would say 90% of South Africans right now or even across the globe people are going through the same thing they're mentally challenged right now we have to start having conversations that impact on policy reformation I'm the type of person that when I sit with a guest I always calculate okay what's the impact of this conversation where are we taking this mm -hmm. and I think those who are paying those who are going to pay the ultimate price are people like you and I. Absolutely. Who Our taxes are already sit, going up. <laughs> so You are taking a back seat on a ride where you should be driving it. Yes. I and, agree with you. And and, 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 and and I'm saying this with every humility I can find in my body to say, at what point, Doc, does it ache you enough to say, I'm not letting this happen under my watch? Our young girls, you know who are their role models? Prostitutes. Yes, girls who we see. Girls, no, I'm, I'm going to label it. Mm -hmm. Someone that you see having a perfect life but cannot tell you exactly what is it that they're doing in society. Yes. But their life is perfect. Yes. You'll meet them at the business lounge. Yeah, absolutely. You, you meet them at the lobby of the five-star hotel. And you there on a business conference. And they there on a, yeah. On a mission to make money. Yeah. I, I'm saying, and your daughter starts telling you, Mom, I want to be like Crystal. I want to be like mm. Selena. But uh, you know. So that's, that's, that's one aspect. I'm saying this in relation to what you do from a CSI perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can talk about the discourse in our government and all we want. I want to deal with this problem at an infancy stage. 
Yes, I just want to add there, you know, you just mentioned my daughter. Yes. So I want to just, sorry, my, my way of thinking is totally different. Uh, okay. But it just suddenly dawned on me that I should mention this. So my daughter is my mentee. Mm. Um, she's literally a mini me. Wow. So she's studying. She's doing a honors in communication science. Um, she's working in corporate, in a big corporate. She's at Momentum okay. as events manager. And she has a business. Shout out to her. I mean, let's give her a shout out. What's her name? Daksha. Daksha. Yes. Shout out to you, Daksha. Keep it going. Keep it going. Yes. And, 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 and dog, life is a relay. You are at the point you could be the one who might, you know, be in the starting point or midway. But Daksha's daughter has to hit the finish line. Not to win an essay but a finish yes. line to win at the United Nation, yes. to win at the G8 Summit. Absolutely. So what, where I was actually going with that, yeah. as me being her mentor, right. is going back to grassroots level as to how we can influence and inspire other women and girls. And it starts at the bottom. Mm. So girls need to latch onto a role model, somebody who's positive and because we know social media is ruining a lot of girls. Big time. We see the models, the influencers. Um, it's uh, so distorting. And you know what was so interesting that I read the other day? Yes. It was, uh, a, it was no way that came up with um, this new law. Yes. That all influencers yes. have to now declare, declare right. their photoshopping. Yeah. True. And, and it's, you know, it's people like us that go um, on social media. But when are we going to get there when we just change the Minister of Communication and we got somebody new? And I, and I would like to find out, when there's a reshuffle, is there a handover file or everybody comes with their new ideas? Do, do you know anything about it? Because it'll be, for me, I think it'll be regressive mm -hmm. to take on an office that had programs that needs to be seen through to finish. Um, why I'm asking this, I was talking to the former Minister of Communication mm -hmm. on such matters. Because um, I'm dealing with a lot of organizations against cyberbullying. Um, one of the why I took this journey is a kid got killed in high school who was bullied on Instagram by people that he doesn't even know. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it really, really, I, I said, I'm going to do this and I don't want to be public. It's the first time I talk about it. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest commitment where I put my money and time is on cyberbullying. And I've been sitting with the former minister's team on how best to address this issue because it's there, it's happening. I had to get my son off Instagram, who's 12 years old, whom one day I read his DMs, and there was an old lady that said, F you, I oh hate your dad. Are you serious? And he came to me crying. I'm like, what is wrong? Something said, go to his YouTube history. go to." But I could see this guy's tortured, tortured completely. And... I'm not responsible for people who, you know, are struggling with themselves. Mm -hmm. So if somebody say I hate you, it's not, it's not, doesn't affect my price of bread. Yes, absolutely. But I have a problem with people who target kids. Yes. And want to express their deficits of live of life and bad decisions that they've made l growing up, and pour it on someone who has nothing to do with why they are where they are. So this problem is so serious that I asked the previous um, um, communications team to really look at serious laws that will best um, punish cyber bullies. Mm. But if you're gonna have someone new taking over office and don't understand what is priority from the previous office, how do we move things forward? Then it looks like all we are is a five-year journey because every five years, government change. And if we don't share a common vision, then somebody comes up with their own program. So it'll be a, a true, la it'll, uh, for me, I, 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 I hope anybody watching can help me if you know better, but it'll be a big loss if we don't share, hand, if we don't have a handover file in leadership um, to best complete some of these programs that will see the fourth industrial revolution being lived up to what it is. Do you want to hand over file or should we start something new? Because what's been done so far? Um, 
yeah, you know, you can say it again. I agree with you. But but what we need to do, and I want to get to Farm Ram's product solutions because I know we got a limited time. What we need to start doing is have programs that vet, you know, good ideas in every department mm -hmm. and flash out ideas that are redundant and not working. I, I really think people of your cognitive energy should form consultants privately because once you become hired or you you know you form part of government yourself you're going to be given a different mandate and sure. i'm not saying yes it's sure. going to change your mandate yes. you know it's sad for a person like you to report to a dg who's clueless but by <laughs> virtue of being a dg you succumb to his thinking your you know just window dresses. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. not, we should have private individuals who love this country be given the opportunity to consult on behalf of government in vetting some of the programs that we know are not going to work in the real world because Th they're there. I like I, that. I like that thinking of yours. I'm, yes. I hear of, I, hear, I cringe when I see a minister announcing things like they celebrate cutting ribbons on programs that are so regressive that are not going to take us anywhere and they announce it with a smile yes. and i say instead of criticizing this particular politician how do i help them because i think i've walked that journey before there's nothing but crocodiles in that ocean you are going to drown you're not coming back so yeah, so, I agree with you. I, you know, I've been to some of the schools in the most remote areas in Limpopo and and Pamalanga. And if you look at about the 50 and 60 kids yeah. in one class yeah. where they're sitting at desks where their legs can barely fit under the desk hmm. because they don't have proper furniture in the class. Hmm. So how do you expect a kid to think properly if you're not comfortable? Forget being well nourished. Well, that's it. And then girls not having sanitary products, they can't go to school. And we know in most rural areas, girls and boys, they walk long distances to school and back every hey. single day. If I talk about Custer Semenya, yeah. she used to walk long distances to school and back. Mm. I uh, actually uh, went to the school where she, uh, where she finished matric. Oh, wow. Her high school, yes. You did? Yes. Okay. We so handed over menstrual cups to the school, the, to the girls there at the school. Unbelievable. That's and God bless you for that. And they still have a pit toilet. I day? used the toilet, yes, to, till this day. No, but Doc, you see, that's that for me is brain. It frustrates it's, me when I think about it. We're talking about human beings. We're talking about people. As a, you know, I still maintain that we are all one. We, 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 we cannot say there aren't resources. I generally think when the resources are in the hands of people with brain cloth and they can't think beyond the cloth, it's... Mm -hmm. We all unfortunately move at the pace of such, so it's 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 really sad. But I want to get to uh, your experience. What made you take an aggressive approach in this particular business? Because I really think there has to be more of the Dr. Shamilas out there that are prioritizing hygiene and the well-being of our young girls. You know, mm -hmm. women are the nucleus of society. And when they succumb to men that flashes anything that glitters is because from their early development, they had, not, they had nothing of value to pride themselves of. So they came to this world already clear that if I don't bag, I'm not going to get it. And you can't teach someone in 21 that bagging is wrong when all they've done throughout their life is to walk around looking for handouts. Because until that handout was granted, mm -hmm. their surroundings never changed. Y yes. You know? And then we talk about the unemployment rate in South Africa as well. So the that's, other another, day, that's a totally different issue. So I, I think we need a longer chat. We do, but I want to share this quickly with you. Um, I was driving in a convoy of um, Minister of Small Business Development at that time. Uh, I won't mention which one. Lindy and at the, traffic, at the traffic light... There was these two ladies with the kids begging. You know, these ladies who use little kids. Mm -hmm. And the car almost hit that lady, okay? Because these kids, you know, they carry them and flash them in so that, you know, you can have that guilt. It's, oh, you know, and I said to one of the guys who works in the office, I said, this 
mentality. This kid here from this age of three or four, we've normalized poverty. You've normalized it. You said it's okay to be poor, to be at a traffic light and bad. Yes. You've made them understand that's the Bible. Mm -hmm. You can't at 18 go back to that very same kid and tell that particular child, roll up your sleeve and work hard because anything you want in life, you're going to have to work for it. No, their reality is anything I need to have in life, I have to beg for it. Mm-hmm. You, you understand? I that? understand fully. I, sorry, my mind is going all over the place now. I'm so, thinking of other scenarios. So I mentioned when we got to our destinations, hey, did you see that lady? What are you doing with all these people who are begging? And, she's, and you know what she told me? She said, Tibos, it's not my fault. These people must get out the streets because one day we're going to hit them um, as we travel. And I realized we don't have a solution. Mm-hmm for some of the problems, or the people that we have trusted with solutions generally don't have them. That is true. The people we've trusted with solutions generally they don't have them. And I pray, no, I believe that we are in an era where an army of doers is going to come out of nowhere and we got to be very robust and say for too long we have been in the back seat of this problem. We are taking center stage to combat this thing because I'm sorry, it, it, it's, it's the negotiation and, and being modest, it's, that doesn't work. We have to be on combat mode to fight poverty. Yes, and I think that's where collaboration comes into play. We need to collaborate. We can't work in silos. Yeah. We need the buy-in from other people as well. And we as individuals can make a difference. Now, your name ring bells in the President of the United States office. I'm certain your influence, your drive, where you stand, Lifetime Achievement Award. I mean, again, congratulations. I salute you for your accomplishment. Being the first ever South African to receive this award. How do we translate this achievement into some plan of action that can go and steer or bring about some drive in the highest office of this country. We're going to use Touch HD. Woo! I, didn't, I wasn't ready for that. I want to drop a bomb on that. <laughs> Doc is jabbing me hard. Woo! That was an uppercut. <laughs> you hit me hard there, Doc. Oh, yes, we're going to use Touch HD. I believe so. <laughs> but we also going to be the ones behind this giant that you are to say we've been talking we've been waiting probably for the right people to come I think it's time for us to go to those people because I believe that God helps people who are on the field you gotta be halfway before your breakthrough how do you do that though because um, our president knows me very well he knows my product. Um, he's had a fly in his head. I've got photos with him. Mm. Uh, whenever I bump into him, I go and say hello to him. I bypass his bodyguards. I'm one of the privileged South Africans hello, because look I have at the you. guts. Hello. I have the guts to push through. I mean, I've done it a few Please times. Please say that again. I, I need I need sisters to hear this. It's not the it's not it's not it's not the, it's not it's not the the, the the cleavage, the hair, the it's the guts. Yes. You take the risks. I think for, for me, uh, being an entrepreneur is all about taking risks. Yeah. So you've got to be gutsy. You've got you to get what you want. So you push through President Cyril's bodyguards and say, hey, President, hi, what's up? How are you, sir? Yes. <laughs> I've got photos of him hugging me and holding me and touching me and, and you know, appreciating the fact that I came to him. And he knows about your product. Let's talk he more about He knows about my product Let's talk about well. this product. Let's, 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 let's talk about it because we got to get this product out there. Um, and, and, and tell me more about it. So the Princess D Menstrual Cup was launched because I found there was a need to keep girls in school. Right. It's sustainable because it's reusable for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Amazing, amazing product because you don't just get a menstrual cup. You get a sterilizer cup as well. So it's a one-stop solution, one stop solution okay. for 10 years. So this is what it looks like. It's a small cup. You fold and you insert like a tampon. 
So there's many folds and we take the girls through the training and we show them exactly how to, you know, insert the cap, I how to take, remove the cap. take a picture there. Okay. So that's basically what it looks like. We do it this way. Right. So we take them through the training. We get uh, corporate sponsors, um, so we supply the product. We go out into the communities. We do the activation and training around the product. Um, because you can't just give a girl a box and say, here's a menstrual cup. Please go and use this. She won't know what to do with it. Mm, okay? Mm, mm. She'll be scared just looking at this. So, but when you take her through the training right. as to how to fold it, etc., it's so much easier. I mean, easier. We had a girl that actually went into the bathroom put a menstrual cup in and said, I'm wearing my cup. That's how comfortable it is. And then when you insert, yeah, but now it pops open. So it forms a seal against your vaginal wall. Oh. Now remember, it doesn't go right up to your hymen, so it doesn't affect your virginity. It's, so so it it, that's on, what I wanted to ask you. Yes, yeah, so and this sits on the opening. Nothing spills of, over? Nothing, because when it pops, when you insert, it pops, and then it forms a suction. So it gives you that leak-free protection. Because, Got you. Yes. So everything falls directly into the cup. Yes. And it just collects. So that's a big difference between a tampon and a sanitary how pad. Is it how, how does it absorb whatever it collects? It doesn't absorb, it collects. That's a big difference. Sanitary pads and tampons, they, they absorb. absorb and they collect. Yes. I mean, they, they absorb yes. and the cup collects. So that is the big difference. And how do I dispose it? You don't. So uh, this, is, this can be worn for up to 12 hours at a time. So it's ideal for schoolgirls. They insert the cup in the morning, leave it in throughout the day, when they get home in the evening, they can remove their cup. So you, it's very easy to remove. You just press the button. Can I feel? It's medical grade silicone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was worried about the substance. If it's hard, it's made of silicone. Yes, medical grade okay. silicone. Okay. So it's all tested. We've got our certification in place. So they would just press the bottom here like this. Yes. And it releases a suction. You'll see the holes on either side. It releases a suction and you just gradually pull it down in a vertical direction. So and there's no spillage. Obviously the how to use can be explained to a grade eight. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, we're doing uh, grade early. sixes now. Okay. I mean, the girls are starting so early these days. I've got um, a doctor in Durban that asked me to sponsor a girl who was eight years old four years ago uh, with goodness. cerebral palsy in a wheelchair. And uh, she's been using my cup ever since. And the doctor now sponsors girls. But so, Doc, this product, is it manufactured here? Um, do we have... FDA, do we yes, have? Yes, we've got all certifications SAB, in place. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, not SABS. We tried with government. We're working with government now, mm -hmm. but they came back and said there's no standard to match it against. So gotcha. to create a standard is a whole process. But the medical fraternity like recognizes. Oh, the I've safety. got doctors prescribing it. Yes. Really? Yes, it's incredible. Um, for those who not necessarily want to buy it, but want to join the program in rolling out this product um how do we make contact with your organization contact me can um, you get can we get your website yes so i'm on all social media platforms shamila ramjawan um my and i gotta help everybody else because i had a pr I, I, I was struggling with the ramjawan part so ramjawan is r-a-m-j-a-w-a-n correct yes correct okay so it's shamila ramjawan um i'm on instagram facebook uh, Princess D menstrual cup on Instagram. Right. It's Princess D menstrual cup. Can I see cup. that yellow, the, the blue one? Okay, so what I did was I decided I'm very creative and innovative and I love color. Okay. So I decided to come up with different colors of sterilizer cups because I found that a lot of the uh, schools that you go to and a lot of organizations, they are girls that live in the same home. Yes. And one menstrual cup should be used per girl. So you can't share this. It's like a toothbrush you don't share a toothbrush it's a personal problem a uh, personal position but the so, sterilization can we share the sterilization yes so this is what the sterilizer cup looks like so it opens up like this oh okay. look at you you put your cup in here this is after your menstrual Usage. cycle at yes. the end of your cycle you sterilize just once a month so you would actually put your cup in here boiling water close it and you leave it aside for 15 minutes or so sterilized you take your cup out, you can leave it to dry because you don't want any fiber or tissue going onto the yes, cup. Yes, yes. Because you're going to use the same cup next month. So you empty out the water, you fold your sterilizer cup. This is Hold so on, cool. so how many cycles can I use this for? Because you just did. 10 years. 10 years? Yes. It's the same? The same cup. 
I think the reason why we're not rolling this out because somebody at Latex is it Latex? Tampon? Who creates? What's that company? You you are a threat to them. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into that. You are a big threat. If if I you, had a if I, if I owned if I owned what are those what are those, is it Latex? Lele. Lele. Said, yes. uh, yeah, I'm not going to mention any names. My sorry, cameraman. But Lele. I had uh, an attorney's letter sent to me when I launched my product. I think yeah. it was in the second year. And they said to me, you cannot compare our product, uh, your product to tampons. And I said, but I can. Because I used to use a tampon and I'm speaking uh, the facts. <laughs> wow. So I've used your product before. So that's what you're saying. Yes, used I used your product, your product before, before, and this is my and preference. Is, so, so, Doc, <laughs> wait a second. You understand that you will take them out of business. Well, this is it. This is why we can't get shelf life in the major retailers. Because I, remember, I got it the sanity now. Your the, problem the sanity is you are disturbing, you are interrupting with monopoly. Yes, it's taken me five years. I've had meetings with big retailers in South Africa. They won't take it. And it's just hanging. It's been hanging for five years. But I got years. some connections. We can make a call. Thank you. We can make a call. <laughs> and I this say, is so cool because yeah. look how it actually slots in. And I travel the world in this. It's Stuff unbelievable. In my handbag. It's no unbelievable. metal detection. But you know how many countries also need this? Okay, forget our villages. Yes, we're struggling, of course. But in just Sadek region, yes. you'll be shocked. Right here. Yes. Right here. I was in Lesotho a week ago. Yes. You'll be now, shocked. talking about Lesotho. Yeah. I'm working with two doctors in Lesotho. And uh, they see girls almost every single day. Okay. Because girls, they have... No sanitary products. So they use cow dung. They take cow dung, they wet it, dry it, oh, and they make man. sanitary pads out of it. Some of the girls actually take cow dung and stuck it, stuff it up their vaginas. Lord help us. And they end up with infections. No, gee. Do we oh. need to see this? Woo! Exactly. This is what our girls go through. If you look in the rural areas, our rural areas Dog. in South Africa, girls are using leaves, feathers, pages from the, their I textbooks. Know about the leaves. Pages from their textbooks or collect newspapers. My goodness. They and have nothing to use. And you, you wonder why we have such infections. Yes. People grow with these infections and yes. you ask yourself, what, what is the cause? So, Doc, it's sad that, you know, the re this is a reality in our life today, but I'm excited that there's a solution to it. And yes. your product and many other products, Princess D and wh whoever that's working on, the more we lessen the shame and the humiliation our young girls have to go through. You know, I'm not really worried about adults and, you know, but I'm talking about primary school girls because you can be an A student if your self esteem I is smile when diminished. You say that. I smile when you I say that. I don't care how student. smart you are. Because I changed numerous girls' lives. Yes. And the, the most recent one is a girl that ended up with five A's. Hmm. In Limpopo. And never had access to a sanitary pad. But she started using the menstrual cup for two years. And we kept her in school. And she's now at UJ. No! <laughs> they say our time is up in the Because you're preaching to me. I could talk to you forever. But I have, to respect, I have to respect my director. Now, before we close, you just said something profound and powerful. And the thought that hit me is somebody who was going to spark the thought to cure cancer probably could not do it because the day they needed to express their vivaciousness, they were held back by their circumstance as a result of not being confident with themselves. And how many times, how many actuarial scientists we, didn't, we did not produce as a means of how they started. So we can change that. Yes. Yeah. We can change We can change that. I, I, I salute you. I, 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 yo, yeah, respect for your work, Doc, and I really think this conversation is long overdue, and ladies and gentlemen, I am on it in the month of August. We were, we were thinking with our content team and say, who are we going to bring? And I told them, please don't bring me so-and-so, don't bring me so-and-so. I don't want, I, I want something unconventional. So shout out to the team, the production team, these amazing students, these amazing young people that we're working with. Um... You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to have had this dialogue with you and greater work we are going to do through Princess D and many, 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 many more. I look forward to having a webinar or a masterclass with you and sharing some business, better business ways. Absolutely. I'm to, looking forward to that. Please. And I also want to add, um, how many female staff do you have here? Oh, you can see. Just checking over. I have, I think the majority is ladies. 
the director, the content manager, it's, it's ladies. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So I want the numbers because I want to sponsor them a menstrual cup each. Whoa! I was going to ask, how much is that? The retail is 300, but for CSI, we have special pricing. So, so if I order it online, this cup for 300 can last me for 10 years? Yes. Whew. 10 years. Imagine, you, uh, you know, I always say the men or partners go to the nearest garage in the middle of the night to yeah. get sanitary products for their, their partners or their wives, etc. Yeah. This menstrual cup for 10 years, you don't have to do that anymore. And it works out to under you two rand a month opposed to the 80 to 100 rand a person normally spends. Unbelievable. I And it's eco-friendly because there's no wastage. I think there's a retailer we can make a call to. Lovely. I think there's a retailer we can make a call to. Let's get this product out there, Doc, and let's keep doing great things. I look forward to hearing more from you. And again, congratulations to your lifetime uh, on your Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations on your um, Volunteer Service Award, both um, recognized and signed by President Joe Biden. Isn't he an amazing guy? He's amazing. I can't wait to meet He's him. He's incredible. I can't wait like, to travel again so I can meet him. I have a video I put on Instagram of President Biden in the 80s when he was speaking against the apartheid government and people didn't know how this man has been instrumental um, in fighting the former government at that time and lifting sanctions against South Africa. So when I put that video up, people were like, oh, because during his campaign he was labeled all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And um, again, as society, social media, we crucify products before we put them to test. Yes. Because that is our lens. Remember, we all see life through our own lens. So if I say you're a failure, it's because I'm one. Yes. And that reminds me of the message that person sent to your son. Yes. It all comes, it's the parents. And now imagine how the parents bring up their kids. Hello. As well. Hello. So it's, it spirals into something just unacceptable. I want to Because make I always believe that discipline begins at home. Doc, you've nailed it. Again, I want to keep saying congrats. I've never said congrats to somebody in an interview so many times, but I really think we didn't have an interview. We had a conversation that we needed to have, and this conversation is going to spark the right people yes, and the sure. right minds to bring on this change we're yearning for. So I've already rolled up my sleeve. I'm ready. I even got my camouflage war pants on today. So we're going to war. Oh, wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Can I just add something? Yes, please. I also have a talk show. Do you? Yes, it's called The Red Corner Show. Okay. And I, it, we're actually celebrating one year. I started it last year in August. I was, um, I was asked by UNISA to be the brand ambassador for UNISA mm. and also have a slot in the UNISA radio. But that was in March and then COVID hit. <laughs> and I decided... I'm here at home. I'm a people's person. I'm a hug huggy person. You know, I love hugging people and I love the close contact. I thought, let me just start my own show. Right. So I started the Red Corner Show. It's a year now. I've interviewed over 150 people already. Look at show. you. For Women's Month, I'm celebrating 31 inspirational women from across the globe. I've had interviews with India, the UK, the US, wow. uh, Italy, you are in Dubai. <laughs> You don't play, Doc. So, um, yes. So every single day, I'm. Uh, you How know, do we access it? Yes, it's. How do we access Red it? Corner Show. Red I've, Corner Show. I've even now gotten my YouTube personalized URL, Red Corner Show. So search gotcha. for it, and you'll pick it up. Definitely. Amazing people that come on board, and I, I just believe that we have the voices yes. to empower other people. Yes. And it's just just not women on the show; it's men and women on the show. Okay. But uh, just for Women's Month, it's women. But I just feel that our voices can have such an impact. Oh, without a we doubt. We are engaged with other women and men from across the globe. Yes. To bring about change. And Amen. Change. Amen. And you know what? I'm marching the same direction as you are, dog. If it's about bringing that change, let's have these conversations. Let's, because that's the only way we build societies. And I'm glad that you're doing it too. So we are both on the play field. And, uh, yes. And I, uh, I had an interview with a lady from Italy just the other day. Okay. Joe Wheeler, and she's definitely going to watch this. Okay. Um, shout out to Joe Wheeler all the way in shout Italy. Shout out to is her. It, is, it, is it Milan? Uh, what, what part of Italy? It's a uh, city Rome? called Sebonita. Oh. Um, Sebonita. So she's invited me to come across 
next year in April to yes. do a live broadcasting of my show with all expenses paid. I've been invited by what? the mayor of Sabanita. <laughs> Look at The Honorable Marco Pasquelli yes. has invited me yes. as a VIP guest to come to Sabonita. And this is and the mayor of Sabonita. Yes, to broadcast live. I conclude by saying, Doc, I generally think we don't even need mainstream um, headlines for this because the truth of the matter is you surpass their mandate. Remember, you don't fit in that scope. What You said when we, when we started, you got these big achievements and they never make the news. No. It's not, you are too superior to make the news because yes. our news are driven by commercial objectives and that is feed people junk. Yes. And that's what sells. Absolutely. And I want to say thank you to UNISA for supporting me in my journey. Uh, right. They're really, really proud of me. I hit the UNISA news three times already in the last six months. Congratulations. So thank you, UNISA, for supporting me. Wow. Um, I'm always in a position where I go and refer to the Bible, but there's a scripture that says, um, if the gospel can make an impact to that one soul, the multitudes means nothing. So we're not in the business of how many, we're in the business of who. Yes. And you made an impact to that right who. Mm -hmm. So thank you for thank what you. you've done. Thank and, you so uh, much. All the best. We'll be checking out the Red Corner, ladies and gentlemen, on YouTube. I wanna follow you on Instagram right now. What is your Insta handle? Shamila dot Ramjawan. Shamila dot Ramjawan. You just had yourself one more follower, and that is Tibo Touch. Shamila. Thank you. I started following you on Facebook. I'm not sure if you noticed. I'm not active on Facebook okay. at all. I'm sorry to say this. There's like ten Tibo Touches on Facebook. I'm only on Insta, Twitter. I'm not keeping up with the rest of these platforms, but you guaranteed. Did it's, you find me? I found you. I followed you already. Awesome. That is you. There you go. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Oh, and I was you. Mrs. Johannesburg 2019, by the way. Oh, skip. Okay. Can't stop you see this now. beautiful face? Like, stop it now. What is it? <laughs> Maybe my next interview with you. My next interview with you is, what are you not? <laughs> We're going to have an hour conversation on what you're not. But thank you right now. I'm not a singer. Okay. Great. Don't, <laughs> like, please. You wouldn't be a Lifetime Achievement Award recipient if you were one. So <laughs> certain things accept that you cannot do. But what you do best is keep changing people's life. And thank you for doing that. And God bless you. Thank you so much. And thank yes. you for having me on the show. It was such an amazing chat. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. You're and God bless welcome. you too. You're more than welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how we wrap up today's conversation with Dr. Shamila Ramjuwan, um, who's my guest on The Touchdown. And we keep in touch, making these conversations accessible to you. Get more, um, get on touchhd.co.za. I'll be posting more videos as well. For those who missed out, you can get the audio version um, right on our podcast section. So like I said, every day, every week, we got to wake up to something new. And I had someone who I learned so many new things about today. And I'm grateful. And let's all be out there to change our surroundings. God bless you. <laughs>